how Master Uwe became the most hated person on YouTube. I don't know why I said it like that, but hey, you know what I'm saying? Let's get into it. Let's get, I don't, I see, I be seeing, like, I seen Dr. Uwe stuff, but I be seeing like his, his workout stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, like, um, did he, he had like a, I don't know, he fought this, he was a boxer, right? He had a boxing match with some influencer. I know that's that's all I know from Dr. Um, Uguay. I don't know. I said, Doc, why does it keep saying doctor, bro? What the fuck? Master. That's so that's so crazy. Just say master out there with no no contacts. Just say, oh, hell no. But um, Master Uguay, I don't know. Um, what the controversy is about. Let's, let, let's see. Oh, okay. Mike Tyson once said, social media made y'all way too comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the face for it. Facts. Facts, bro. Yo, these Twitter, Twitter happy month, bro, dude, ain't gonna lie, bro. Half the shit you see, you see on the internet, nobody's gonna say to your face, on oh, half, no, 99.9, nah, fuck half, bro. 99.9. Nah, nah. There is some, there is some, you know what I'm saying, motherfuckers out there that really a body, you know what I'm saying? But 99.9% of you guys, Ain't saying nothing to nobody's face, bro. 99% of you guys don't even talk to actual humans after, like, <laughs> in, real, in reality, my guy. Lots of people like to test what <laughs> wild stuff they're able to say online before it gets way too far. No one has really pushed this quite like Master Uguay. Uguay is a humongous Uguay. creator with a face recognized all over social media, but specifically on YouTube. There's a 99... True, like, I know, I know, I do know, I do know the guy's face, I just don't know what he be doing, you know what I'm saying? chance that you've seen one of his many many shorts even if you don't remember it he always had a die-hard fan base but recently has become one of the most hated creators in the community how did someone with so many subscribers get so hated so fast let's cut the bullshit and That's get right question. into it now master Uguay, whose real name is omer sastim started his journey where most people start their content journey on tiktok he discovered that he could do a very good impression of the character master Ugwe from the movie Kung Fu Panda. And to give him credit, it's pretty spot on. Now, the character was known to drop absolute gems of wisdom to all of the other characters in the movie and stuff that you could actually apply in real life. And Omer would use this voice to give joking pieces of advice. If she cheated on another man, her coochie is as big as Sudan. And these quotes of wisdom were usually just funny jokes about getting girls Bro, or kissing no the way. homies. Ugwe never really <laughs> intended to go viral with these videos. He kind of just made them for fun with his friends. But he liked the views that he was getting a lot. And it made I him see. crave more. Soon he started posting more of these types of videos to keep the momentum going. And pretty quickly, he gained a sizable audience on TikTok with over a million followers. Jeez. Along with a pretty strong fan base. Whenever he po posted these quote type of videos, they were usually met with comments like, yes, master. But the problem with this type of content is that it can only get milked for so long before it gets pretty dull. Usually the bit gets tiresome and people move on. So Uguay started to try different forms of content to expand on the brand. He started creating multiple different TikTok accounts so he can try different styles of videos. He Gotta tried stuff like following bit. trends, using audios, and even telling some of his own jokes. This way he could show off his own humor and originality and try and be versatile. And these jokes were not exactly family friendly. He would tell the edgiest stuff that he could get away with deeming it as dark humor. Okay, I see where this is going. I see where this is going. Racism! You know what I'm saying? Just like, just, that's where it goes. That's the only way the train's gonna stop. You know, what do you call an autistic kid with a gun? Special forces. And a lot of these jokes were race jokes. What do you call a Chinese kid who was born too early? Wong Tai Ming. Obviously, with almost any dark humor jokes, there will always be the types of people that don't find it funny. And noticeably, a lot of the jokes he made were targeted at black people. Just don't need your assistance. And since Uguay himself was not black, people don't need your assistance. And since Uguay himself was not black, people found this in. Okay, that's it's not that's not funny. That's not. <laughs> bro, why am I laughing? Why am I laughing? Why am I laughing? Why am I laughing, bro? <laughs> Pretty bad taste. Yikes. That was until he befriended <laughs> another creator who co-signed these jokes and basically gave him the pass, man like Isaac. He himself also gave him the pass. Pass the what? Now nah, I laugh at one joke. Don't hey, don't think she's sweet now. Hold on. A pretty big reputation for making dark humor jokes, specifically black jokes.
So it only made sense that the two of them would work together. It was like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Uber could make all of the black jokes he wanted and he can get away with it with Isaac being in the video. This respectfully helped both of them grow. Granted, most of the people who watched this stuff were just edgy middle schoolers, but views are views. Yet, it still wasn't enough for <laughs> Ugwe. He usually pushed these jokes that he friends. could get more and more views. Mm. However, TikTok guidelines are pretty strict. It's not easy to make offensive jokes on TikTok because most of the time they will actually get removed since they always usually reach the wrong audience. Ugwe's videos constantly got removed all the time for hate speech. But did this stop him? Of course not. Of course he not. kept posting dark humor because it's what built his audience in the first place. However, eventually he poked the bear too hard and his account with 2.7 million followers was permanently banned from Damn. TikTok. But again, uh, uh. Yeah, I saying, that one, that one kind of hurt me. This did not stop him. After all, Ugly created multiple accounts and was posting on all of them, getting millions of followers from each of them. Damn. If an account got banned, he would just create a new one. But TikTok still wasn't really doing it enough for Ugwe. He needed more. Ugwe's goal was more. to maximize views while putting in as minimal effort as possible. Okay, and that's when a light bulb appeared over his head. Ugwe saw accounts that were getting hundreds of millions of views just by posting other people's videos. It was so simple, yet so effective. So he thought to himself, Definitely not what I'm doing. What if he was able to also repost these videos and get the views while adding his own brand and likeness to it? Ugwe saw the opportunity and found the perfect place to implement his strategy YouTube. Now, at the time, the trend of making the Chad face was very hot. You know, when people would make that Giga Chad face when someone does something super alpha. Ugwe created a new Is format that where he would. I did react to viral videos inserting the Chad face and basically spam post those like crazy. And just like how he did on TikTok, he created multiple YouTube channels where he would be able to post these videos non-stop. He's had all of these channels for nearly three years and some of them for barely even a year, yet he's gotten over 20 billion views across all of them. On average, that's around 18 million views a day at least. So this was working way better than TikTok. Damn. Yet, it still wasn't enough for for Ugwe. The shorts were doing crazy views, but it There's wasn't more? really enough to establish him as a brand. Ugwe wasn't really doing anything unique. It was literally just recycled videos and old edgy jokes. So Ugwe decided to get into long form videos so that he could really be taken seriously as yes. a creator. He started off by posting try not to laugh meme challenges where he would look at memes and well, try not to laugh. And he tried making the titles as clickbaity as possible to match his edgy style. And they did I'm pretty sure. well at first, but they slowly started to get less and less views, eventually not even scrapping 20k. He needed something Yikes. different. Something that still wouldn't really require not extreme like effort, but oh, could no. still get those views. Oh, Nothing no. was off the table. And he noticed that his friend Man Like Isaac was doing a particular style of videos that were doing very, very well. Walking into KFC until I see a black person. Walking into Starbucks until I see a middle-aged white woman. Running until I see something that starts with the letter N. You get the point. The title with the extremely short length of less than 20 seconds was all already a joke on its own, but it did massive numbers. And Master Ugwe got another light bulb above his head. Soon he started posting videos with the most clickbaiting title you could possibly think of. My Never. opinion on black people. My opinion on the LGBTQ community. My opinion on Jews. Very clearly- Why are they all two, two minutes and 15 seconds? What the fuck? That's a- specific time. He leaving you curious as to what he could possibly say. It was almost impossible not to click on the video to see what it was. But each video would just him be silent talking over some music to troll the audience. But this still worked pretty well and got him millions of views each time. Ugwe's queer was really starting to take off and his face was all over YouTube shorts and on TikTok. So much so that he even landed his first professional influencer boxing match. Yeah, this is what I heard about him. Before that, I don't know all that stuff he was yapping about. I'm like, what? Who? When? How? Where? This is when I'm like, oh, because I'm like, this, 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 this nigga big, you know what I'm saying? This one's huge. Hosted by DAZN, a it's professional a boxing knockout, right? network that works pretty frequently with KSI. Ugwe was hyping up this boxing event pretty hard, but when the match actually started, he didn't even last three whole minutes, not even getting through the very first round. Oh, right. It was topsy turvy. I mean, it's, yeah. Oh, I go right after wow. it. How about Master Ugwe? Wasting no time. No, I'm Interestingly enough, uh, Master Ugwe's got the tie trunks on. Oh! oh my goodness! Sanjugwe 
down, Ooh. a massive shot from the big boy! Now granted, Uruguay is not a boxer, and his opponent was much more experienced than he was. And was not he? to buy shame or anything, but Uruguay was clearly <laughs> not physically ready for sorry, a boxing sorry. match compared to his opponent. Regardless, yo, he still got- Yo, let's talk about David Goliath, bro. What physically ready for- Hey, yo, that dude wakes up like he, he, like he does curls in his sleep, bro. My guy's over here easily benching 315, bro, with his eyes closed. Talking about... Lightweight baby. Lightweight baby. Lightweight baby. Broski, what the fuck? This dude look like he eats small humans. <laughs> he, look, he look like... Bro, I, I, I seen this on online. It's like, uh, bodybuilder, like, it's a, it's a small person inside a big person body that I can't unsee it, broski. Like, he do look like, he do look like a human inside of another human. Pause. A boxing Pause. match compared to his opponent. Regardless, he still got respect from the community for taking on such a challenge. Being involved in a professional boxing match is huge for any influencer and helped him be certified as official. The certified match itself has nearly certified. 2 million views on YouTube and also helped with Uguay's status. It still wasn't enough for Uguay. I'm about to say, it sounds like the man just keep going up and... You know what I'm saying? Good like good way. Now before good getting accolades. into content creation, Ugwe was a musician. He released music under the Elias Bak Lava Boy. But seeing how his master Ugwe persona was gaining more and more attention Bak online, Bak he started to release music under the persona Young Ugwe and Master Ugwe to help promote it. The way he created songs was very, very strategic. They were made so that they could be used very easily for his meme format of videos. He would mm. feature these songs in almost every single one of his memes to help promote the song. And the songs worked really well with the videos but they only did so much to actually promote the music. The music videos would get a couple hundred thousand views, and even on Spotify, he would also get a couple hundred thousand plays. And this is pretty good for a musician, but not as good as you think. Considering he's getting billions of views across these platforms, and that's the most amount his music did, it shows that it's not really good enough to stand on its own. And if you heard the music yourself, you'd see why it's not very popular. But regardless though, this was still good for Uguay. Between the streams and all the views he was getting, he was making a very, very good income. But that would start to to crash down in late 2023. Ugly revealed that his channel was demonetized from YouTube and could not earn any money from them. Oh, the main no. reason being that they found his content to be unoriginal, which it was for the most part. He was literally just taking other people's videos and adding his chat face reaction to it. It's not exactly original. And it's obvious he wasn't even posting these himself. YouTube does not really permit people who do unoriginal content to join the partner program. And oh, Ugly did not take this very lightly. Soon after, Ugly tried to make the claim that they demonetized him because he supported Palestine, mostly because a couple days before he got demonetized, he posted a video about his friend being stuck in Gaza. And while some people may have fallen for this, it's very unlikely that's actually true. Uguay knows that what he did was unoriginal. The formula for reposting other people's videos while reacting to it can be a very successful formula that can get you good views. However, it's seen as pretty cheap because most of the time, people are not very original or unique about it unless what you add actually adds a lot to the video. Because other than that, it's just pumping out brain rot nonstop. When a channel usually gets demonetized, it's really only the one channel that gets affected, not the others, assuming those other channels have not broken any guidelines. So from what we're seeing, it doesn't seem like his other channels were demonetized, even though they were also doing the exact same thing. But I could be wrong. But Ugwe- What the f- Wait, what? What did I- Bro, I, I, I didn't even hear what Broski said, bro. Bro, what? That's a crazy clip. Their channels have not broken any guidelines. So from what we're seeing, it doesn't seem like his other channels were demonetized, even though they were also doing the exact same thing. But I hey, could be wrong. Yo. But Ugwe was so distraught over the demonetization that he posted an entire video I'm claiming that he's going YouTube. to quit altogether. But not even two days later, he posted another video where he claimed that he talked to YouTube representatives directly and he was now able to get monetized. Now you think that maybe he would reflect on the events and possibly even change the style of content so that he wouldn't get into situations like this again. Well, you'd be wrong. He kept with his usual style of clickbaiting videos to try and get people to watch his long form while still continuing with the exact same style nah. of short form. Nothing has nah. changed. And while his views were going up and his music was doing decently well, it still wasn't enough for Uguay. The thing about Uguay's style is that he has to constantly be relevant on shock value in order to be relevant. And when it comes to using that style, you usually have to get more and more 
more controversial each time in order to retain your audience because usually what you initially did for shock value isn't really as shocking the fourth or fifth time. And with that being said, Uguay could not keep doing clickbait videos anymore to try and make people think that he said the n-word and posted a video where he actually said the n-word. I'm gonna say it for the first time in my life properly. Now, obviously, I censored that part because I don't want to play it. Uguay at this point was now jumping on thin ice, and the response to this was still pretty divided. People were shocked to see that it wasn't clickbait, and the rest of the people just didn't really find it funny. But regardless, this video still did more views than his last one, and to Uguay, all views are good views. But at the same time, he started to recognize that he was getting more controversy than he expected. And so he addressed the dark- started to in his last one, and to Uguay, all views are good views. But at the same time, he started to recognize that he was getting more controversy than he expected. Controversy. He said controversy. 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 Or good views. But at the same time, he started to recognize that he was getting more controversy than he expected. Controversy good views. But at the same time, he started to recognize that he was getting more controversy than he expected. And so Not he- At the same time, he started to recognize that he was getting more controversy than he expected. And so he addressed the dark humor jokes by suggesting maybe the audience was racist for assuming that he was talking about a specific group of people. Obviously, this didn't go very well. Trying to pull the, well, maybe you're the racist one for assuming I'm talking about a specific race is not a very good way to respond to harsh criticism. It comes off as a very terrible attempt to take responsibility because that's what it was. But regardless, Uguay had to keep up the momentum to keep the views coming, and it was time to step it up even further with the music. So he dropped the controversy. Controversy. Confidence. Song titled Adolf Hitler is my fella. Fella obviously is not the real word here. The song alone ruined Uguay's reputation as it made him come off as Ain't no way. Obviously is not the real word here. The song That's something that's just that's just stupid. That's not even cringy. That's just stupid. Alone ruined Uguay's reputation as it made him come off as a desperate clout chaser. And at this That's point, tough. all of the other YouTubers were completely sick of his shit. And eventually, one by one, multiple creators started calling him out. As a creator whose audience primarily comes from YouTube shorts, this is giving our community a horrible representation. I mean, the fact that people are making TikToks making fun of YouTube shorts because of you and a couple other creators, we really need to fix that. This right here is the deadliest symptom of YouTube Shorts Brain. You are so far beyond gone in the brain rot universe that you decide, you know what? Now's my time to start just being racist because extra views, extra money, and my ego is so big, I don't even care what offends people anymore. So it's not like this is some immature kid who actually finds this stuff funny. It's a grown adult who genuinely just that wants- ass, bro. Like, this is a grown person, bro. Like, he lived a lot of years on Earth, you know what I'm saying, bro? And bro, still don't know better. That's tough, my guy. What'd you learn through your life? Mm, racism. Mm, racism. Use and attention, and he has no talent to actually make content. So, so he's just making the most scumbaggy videos that appeal to people with less than 10 brain cells. From making slightly edgy jokes to just straight up using That's too many. <laughs> That's too many, my guy. Yeah, I was saying less than five brain cells, my guy. Videos in only a matter of years. And it only took that long for his fans to start catching on to just how horrible and repetitive his jokes are. If you don't know who Master Ugwe is, he's essentially a YouTube short Damn, creator bro. who just what posts a, like oversaturated <laughs> memes and death. Recently, however, this dude's gone completely nuts. He's gone batshit insane. Oh Full no. Too bad cosplay. Not bad. Posting brain rot slop, <laughs> he's just got schizo. Many of the creators believe that Uguay was taking the whole racist standpoint way too far and now was giving all of the creators a bad look for it. Rather than maybe apologizing or admitting that he was in the wrong or way taking to. accountability, Uguay went on a complete Twitter spiral oh, no. where he responded to almost every single hate reply and comment, which just made him look more and more desperate. He then started posting pictures of other creators who were also canceled for saying the N word, like Pew. PewDiePie, iDubs, and Keemstar claiming if they can be forgiven, so can he. And it got to the point where he started even posting more controversial people like Logan Paul and Kim Jong-il, also claiming that if they can be forgiven, so can he. And this made him- Hey, 
Yo. He didn't seem even Yo, King out. That's crazy. more desperate because he was basically claiming that if these people can do terrible things, then so can I, which still made him seem unremorseful. He even tried posting a picture with man like Isaac claiming that this was proof he wasn't racist, basically using the, hey, I'm not racist, my friend is black card. But even man like Isaac himself could not defend what Uguay did, posting a video saying that he did not approve of the song. I personally told him, bro, I don't think you should release it. But then again, you guys know how he is. He doesn't give a shit. And considering Isaac was also into pretty dark humor, that says a lot. Uguay then right. tried to further defend himself that he was just simply an actor playing a role, like how Leonardo DiCaprio played the racist slave owner in Django Unchained. He You're was simply playing a racist <laughs> person. <laughs> trying to compare- There's no way he's comparing himself to Leo, the, like, <laughs> DiCaprio, bro. What the fuck? There's no way. Yourself to a person who played a character made to represent history is just simply another poor attempt to try and defend yourself. I'm None of this dead, was working, bro. so Uguay decided to release an apology through the form of a song. Sorry for saying the N-word. This alone already is pretty bad. But the worst part about it is that after the two minutes of the half-assed apology, he just straight up says the N-word right at the end of the song, doubling down on everything. But in the midst of the controversy, he continued with his usual style. Considering he never learned from his mistakes before, he probably assumed that he was invincible. But he'd be completely wrong. Because a couple days later, all of his channels on YouTube would get completely banned. Multiple channels with several million subscribers and billions of views each gone in an instance. Surprising? Not really. If anything, it's a little shocking that he only got demonetized initially as a punishment and only had one video taken down. But Uguay couldn't fathom the possibility of maybe the fact that he was in the wrong and took to Twitter to blame the ban on spam reporters. While he thought that maybe he could gain some type of sympathy this way, he got the exact opposite. The YouTube community was throwing confetti wow. and celebrating <laughs> over the fact that he was off the platform. <laughs> Wop Wop is crazy. I mean, Uguay getting banned was basically the equivalent to YouTube Christmas. There was not a single person Yo. that was upset that he was gone. Well, maybe except a couple edgy 12 year olds, but everyone was pretty happy. And personally, I do wop see wop. why he was banned. As a Jewish man myself, I genuinely You're don't Jewish? think Uguay is anti Semitic, and I don't really get the impression that he's racist. Jewish the religion or Jewish the culture? I'll be the first to say that I say extremely fucked up stuff, like really, really fucked up stuff. But I say all of that stuff off camera because I say it in a place where I know it's not. What you mean? See, some things shouldn't even be said on camera. You know what I'm saying? That right there. That, that you. What? You, what do you mean? You be. What do you be saying in the dark, my guy? Because what you done in the dark is gonna find a way to shine. It ain't gonna lie. But I say all of that stuff off camera because I say it in a place where I know it's not going to negatively affect people in any type of way. And oh, I'm not. Okay, okay, okay. You're gonna say, hey, yo! <laughs> she might. Boys, I don't buzz you there. Because your favorite creator does it, your idol does it, and even you do it as well. If everyone said every single thing that they said, then everybody would get canceled. The difference here is that Ugwe is simply saying whatever he feels is going to get him as much views as possible without really understanding the consequences of his actions. However, that still does not make it okay. Saying these type of things on a big platform can have a very negative effect on people and does come at the cost of certain groups. Considering his fans are young, impressionable children, this is not very good. Having a big platform means having a responsibility, and Ugwe took oh advantage God. of that. Yo, YouTube guidelines. Broski, the W Yapper. Oh my goodness, Broski. The W Yapper. I'm gonna end the video there. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's gonna keep repeating, you know what I'm saying? Ugwe's a bad person. Now. Well, not like I'm saying. He's just, you know what I'm saying? He's not a bad person, but like, he just he just exploited the game, you know what I'm saying? If I do this, this is going to happen and views and money. More views, more money, you know what I'm saying? People gotta start sacrificing their morals, my guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, 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 this broski knows deep down. Like, I hope he knows anyways, my guy. You know what I'm saying? Imagine going through life and not having any morals, broski. Like, like you have not not having that moral compass that help like point you in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? That's tough, my guy. That's I feel like you ignore your um that inner voice for long enough, my guy. It starts to get real, real quiet. So when you really need it, you know what I'm saying? When it's like, bro, like I really shouldn't be doing this. You know what I'm saying? You can't hear him, my guy. You can't, you can't, you can't hear the guy. You can't hear the moral conscience, my guy. And that's when that, and that's what happened, bro. You ban on every. That's like, like uh, that's tough, bro. Like multiple channels. I've never seen that. Ain't gonna lie. I seen one channel get banned, bro. All your channels got banned, broski. That's tough, my guy. <laughs> like yo. 
maybe y'all um, maybe he'll change. Maybe maybe he's looking in the mirror like, oh, uh, maybe I was, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Possibly. Maybe he's just like fuck it. I don't know.